Charles Martel is actually one of the best gold key commanders in the game. He's extremely versatile. He's good in the field. He's good in the garrison. I even used him to defend my city within like the last couple months on my restart account, which is like 100 million power, all right? So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the things you need to know about Charles Martel. Why it is that he's strangely powerful for being a gold key commander, who it is that you can pair him with, ultimately what talents you might go and use, and there are like half a dozen builds minimum that I can think of for this guy. So stick around in this video for all the things you need to know, because Charles Martel is low-key kind of goaded. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and I've been playing Rise of Kingdoms for literally 2,002 days as of the time of this recording, which is kind of insane. And in this video, I want to share with you my experiences using the overwhelming majority of these commanders through the lens of Charles Martel. What are the things you need to know about him? Does he make it to the end game? And the short answer is kind of yeah. So let's talk about what it is that Charles Martel does that makes him very good. And there's a number of things that are fascinating about his kit. First of all, he is a damage amplifier. He is going to make it so that on the active skill, uh, you gain a 30% bonus to damage dealt for four seconds and you get a shield. That's 1,200 shielding factor of goodness. Okay, the next skill is gonna give you a bunch of stats. 20% defense, 20% health, and 20% march speed. Now that is because I have an expertise. When you max every single skill, you get an extra 5% defense health and that 20% march speed. So weirdly, the expertise skill is a part of what makes him viable in the open field because it gives him the speed he needs to be relevant. The third skill is the most boring of all the skills. 10% garrison attack for your city and 10% damage for your, or I guess defense for your watchtower, which is like, it's almost fully irrelevant in this game. Like the watchtower takes one or two hits and then it's dead. So like watchtower defense is irrelevant. Don't even think about it. All right. Um, the next skill is 30% counterattack. Now counterattack is the damage you deal when someone directly targets you. When someone directly targets you, they take counterattack damage and you can scale that up infinitely with the number of things that are targeting you. <laughs> kind of weird, but this w strange combination is what makes Charles Martel relevant. He is shielding, he is very prickly, and he's got some tanky stats. Now, there is one more thing that makes him relevant, and that is because of what you get access to in the end game. In the end game, that's KVK season three and beyond, you get this building called the museum. And weirdly enough, in the museum, you can get buffs on your commanders from the early game. This balances them with the end game commander. And the buff that you can get on Charles Martel is 35% more attack and 10% health. Bro, that is a lot of stats. Another 45% of stats is powerful. So Charles Martel is good because he has a boatload of stats. He's got a shield. He amplifies damage and he slays it with counterattack. Okay, so now we understand why Charles Martel is good. If you're wondering, well, wait, where do I get him? You get him from gold keys. Now, this is very weird. It is weird because you've heard me potentially say many times, or if this is your first time here, welcome to uh, me often saying that you don't want to use universal legendary commander sculptures to put skills onto your gold key commanders. Why is that? Well, once you max the gold key commander, every time you pull him from here, it's a dead draw. It's worthless to you. There's nothing good to do with your legendary sculptures on a gold key commander after you've maxed them. There's no point. So the weirdness here is that over time, I can show you, I have accumulated a shocking number of Martel sculptures, 1,743 above and beyond the amount that I needed to max Martel in the first place. All right. So what I'm trying to say is not that you can't put universals into Martel because you like him, but that you just ought to be careful. And if you're going to do it, do it in very, very limited moderation. If you're going to be putting a small number of skills on a Martel, or if you just want to make sure to prioritize correctly, my strong recommendation would be to max the first two skills before you work on the last two skills. You really don't want your skill ups to land on this third skill for city defense because in most of the time, you don't need that. I mean, like, honestly, you, your city should never get hit in this game. Only in the chaos of the early game might that happen, maybe. And even then, I got lots of city defense options for you with other command, all right? So on Charles Martel, you want to get these first two skills maxed, especially the first skill, before you unlock or max the second skill and before you start working on the third and fourth skill, all right? Now, there is something that was added into this game called a skill lock that lets you control where the skill ups are going. So you can star up the commander and still use skill lock to control where your skills are going. 
okay? But with Charles Martel, max those first two skills. First the first skill, then the second skill. But in terms of talent builds, holy cow, he is so versatile. Typically, you want him to be the primary commander because he is enhancing damage by 30%. You want the secondary commander to do big damage right after you enhance the damage you deal. See what I mean? So in that world where Charles Martel is the primary, there are several builds I can recommend to you. The first is this build here, which goes for Desperate Elegy. This only makes sense if you're going to fully run it down with Charles Martel, basically in Sunset Canyon. So if you're using him in Canyon, this is a build you can use. But in the open field, I would prefer this build here. It goes for more march speed and stats, which I think is extremely valuable. All right. We've gone in, we got the march speed over here, skill damage taken reduction over here, march speed over here, and we completely maxed out the infantry tree. So this gives you a couple options for the open field. But if you're going to be garrisoning stuff, there are also tons of options. If you were garrisoning a flag, this I think ends up being a build that's really powerful. Although you could switch around a few points if you wanted into things like Undying Fury to generate extra rate. This build works great for a flag, fort, I suppose you could do a pass. But there is one other build that we need to talk about. And to show that to you, I think I want to do it on an infantry command. You see, if your city is going to get swarmed, all right, then there's some really cool self-defense techniques that you can use. Uh, let me try to show this to you. I think I've got the build on Sun Tzu. So he's got the exact, oh no, he doesn't have the same talent tree. Just kidding. He doesn't have the same talent trees. All right, we'll make it over here. We'll shred my flag build and we'll make this build. Um, so if you're defending your city and you're going to get swarmed, there's a talent over here called Know Thy Enemy. 9% less damage when serving as your city's garrison commander if you are surrounded. So if you're taking a multi rally or you're getting swarmed that is insane damage taken reduction it's so powerful so in that world i think the talent build i would want to use where you're getting crazy swarmed would be something that looks more like this we're reducing the damage we take and giving ourselves a lot of defensive stats. Now, if you think you're going to be rallied for some of the time and then swarmed other parts of the time, you could have multiple builds to switch around between, but you're basically going to be getting the maximum number of rage if you're full swarmed. But if it's just one person who's swarming you, you could go in and get these extra points to generate more rage. Or if it's a multi-rally context, you'd certainly want to go do that. All right. So the build ends up looking more something like this if you're getting swarmed. Um, definitely a handy build to have around. Not that you should get swarmed, but if you did, you're going to be really happy that all you had to do was hit switch and it would change the build over and you'd be good to go, all right? So this is a build you could use towards swarm uh, in that situation. But most people, you're interested in the open field build. And like, this is what I would be using in the open field, okay? Now, if you are going to open field the Charles Martel in the early game, what are your options? Well, in the early game, you have so many. You can use Boudicca, you could use Joan, you could technically go and use a commander like Osman, you could use Sun Tzu, you could use, uh, let's see here, Bjorn Ironside is a strong choice. You actually have like a shocking number of secondary commander options. I wonder, probably wouldn't do Pericles. That to me just feels like a lot of tankiness and you're missing all the punch <laughs> that goes into an early game march. But you have many, many good options. Even Olji Mundok is a great secondary for your Charles, Charles Martel primary. I would say one of the more common combos, however, is going to be to use Charles and to hide the Joan behind it so that you can buff nearby marches and they can do lots of damage. That to me feels like a pretty common early game tactic there are of course other ways to run it but uh, like i said even Boudica would go behind a charles martel now once you get to the end game now you've got some interesting combinations i'm not going to pretend that charles martel is meta he is not meta but there are several cool things you can do in the field for example charles martel primary with a skippy secondary ends up being really strong. Basically, any high skill damage infantry secondary can kind of work. I think you could even get away with using Liu Che as a secondary, although I haven't ever done it. Um, there's a bunch of ways that you can just jam infantry as the secondary. The only thing that doesn't excite me is a Richard the First pairing. Charles and Richard, they just don't do any damage together. Like, they're very counter attacky, I guess, but they just don't do any damage. Um, you could do Charles and Alexander the Great. This is a classic early game combo, even got used to rally a lot in the early game 
which is a little surprising, but it'll it'll do the job. So Charles Martel just has like a shocking number of pairings. The thing to remember is that Charles Martel is an amplifying commander. So this is a concept where I'm saying that he is enhancing another commander that you pair with. You generally don't want to put two amplifying commanders together. So you want to have a damage dealer and an amplifier. So Alexander the Great, kind of a damage dealer. Charles is the amplifier in that case. Skippy Prime, big damage dealer. Charles is the amplifier. So because his kit is just stats plus shield plus a damage bonus, you want the commander you pair with to, of course, also be infantry and be big damage. And that's where the Richard I kind of falls down. He's just, he's not a damage commander. It's not what he's there for, all right? Um, now, in terms of equipment, boy, oh boy, you have a lot of early game equipment options for your infantry. And there are so many good pieces that like we can go, you know, kind of piece by piece and talk about it. But for the most part, Windswept is pretty decent. Like you urgently need March Speed on your infantry and any stat that comes with it is worth. So you've got that for the helmet for the weapon this shield is insane health is a very powerful stat um the way that that works is that there's diminishing returns in this game the more of a stat you have the less valuable it comes per point uh, gained but the less of a stat you have more of it you value right like you really want more health is what i'm trying to say and that's because there's a lot of ways to get defense there's a lot of ways to get attack there's not a lot of ways to get health this gatekeeper shield is something you can use for a very very long time it's a great weapon chess piece Windswept is an option. However, this green piece is actually insane. For what it is, this green piece is very good in the early game. For gloves, Calvin's hand is outstanding. I know it's attack and attack is not as exciting as other stats, but this, the Calvin's hand is just like a great starting point over here. And of course, there's also windswept, but personally, I kind of prefer the Calvin's hand, right? For the legs, you've got, uh, let's see here, these Sentry Breaches, giving you 6% attack, and an amazing upgrade, by the way, um, from the Ranger's Trousers. Look at that. Ranger's Trousers are giving you 4% attack, get up to 6% over here, and from there, an even better upgrade is to get yourself a Karox Humility for the health. I even have, on my restart account, some marches still using this. Karox Humility is insane. It's so much value. In terms of boots... Bro, the Scarlet Hounds are amazing. 4% health is amazing. Um, you could start with your Boots of Reverence, of course, and you could use Windswept instead if you wanted to. But right over here, Scarlet Hounds are good. And eventually I upgraded to Frost Treads and to really feel like an upgrade, I really wanted to have this special talent on this. Um, that kind of covers your basic infantry gear. Um, and for Charles Martel in terms of formation, you actually have a... a like among the most options of any of the commanders in the game, technically for an open field march, um, by the way, you won't have formations for quite a while in the game. So if you're looking at me like, wait, I don't have access to this, don't worry about it. Uh, but once you get it, you can do wedge formation for a skill damage boost. You could do arch for a normal attack damage boost. Uh, you could do hollow square for damage reduction and shielding synergy. You could go over to testudo formation which makes it so you're more tanky when you have a shield, which this guy does do shields. Um, and if you're pairing with a healer, you could do circle formation. So like, there's actually a lot of formations that are super viable with your Charles Martel. Um, and shielding is just kind of a weird mechanic. Uh, it is powerful in this game, but generally speaking, I prefer damage to shields unless you are in a garrison. And if you're in a garrison and you're trying to stay alive and prevent a burn... It is really, really good. It's also really good for defending your city and slowing down the pace of troop loss um, so that hopefully you can use a peace shield or otherwise get yourself out of the situation, right? If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing to the channel. I make daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And if that's the kind of thing that you find valuable, subscribing will get you that daily video and consider joining my Discord server. It's discord.gg slash for a whole community of people eager to help you out with your questions and get you sorted out, all right? If you're looking for information about other early game commanders, I'll have a couple cards in the end screen that I think you'll find valuable. Until next time, you have fun, mashing the kingdom.